slowly. I won't it's say it again. Page there must be something. We were here first. This is front page material. Ah, are you trying to get into the city? Got a minute to tell me about your experience at the gate today? I'm Lens, roving reporter for the Boulder's Mouth Gazette. My editor sent me to cover the drama out here at the gate. He wants some fluff piece about the heroic steel watch keeping the mob at bay. Whether or not that's the truth or not. That the refugees here are desperate, hungry, scared people. They're no more. They just want to be safe. I've heard the rumors. Absolutists marching from Moonrise Towers. Whole towns felled by strange curses. It's no wonder they ran. Of course, I can't write any of that. My editor only releases stories his friend Lord Gortash approves of. And he's very selective. Oh, they know some of it. Most would rather bury their heads in the sand anyway. Saves them the bother of feeling responsible. I'll try and get the truth across. Who knows? Maybe a line or two will meet Mr. Needle's approval. I won't be holding my breath. Let us talk to him. Please, if you could just... We have the Duke's full support. The Circus of the Last Days has returned. See Dryad's Gin and Dribbles the Clown back with a new act. I heard a curious sound in the night. What would you know about that, Shadow Heart? Lady Shah permits me to plead ignorance. Forget I your worries. Of Lady Indulge yourself. This is you and your parents. And is your boss here to enjoy him? A weary traveler, battered and bruised. You come for sustenance. No, decadence. A mien cool as ice, yet eyes burning hot. Oh, yes, I know your bliss. A sturdy dwarf, a leather whip, she gives, 
you receive, or have I misjudged you? Am I? Your eyes tell a story, sweetie. You crave more than pleasure, you crave penance. It's fee on you seek, our stern librarian. She isn't here today, alas. Your penance must wait. Well, we've other ways to fill your void. A drink for one, a pair of drow for another. Choose your sin. Sweeting. I'm no fortune teller. If I had a crystal ball, I promise I'd already have consulted it. Truth is, Fionn's gone well missing. And my hands may be skillful, but they were not made to turn every last stone she might be hiding behind. <laughs> to service is my calling, not to be served. Ugh, but I'd be a fool to say no. The girl kept my coffers near overflowing. Two flights up, then turn right and right again. That's Fionn's pleasure room, Elminster's library. Here, take the key. Elminster's library? People will get their thrills in the strangest of places. I'm listening. make the drinks. I'm not telling you about Raphael's sex life. Someone with all the power of the nine hells. Not that type of service down here, love. I've got a husband. And you ain't my type. Oh. Thank the gods. I've had too many miscreants think my kitchen's just another themed playroom. The two men bark softly to each other. A single name reaches your ears. Nine Fingers. It's a name you know. Nine Fingers is the head of the guild, a criminal organization operating inside Baldur's Gate. with the guild now heard nine fingers met a match the new kingpin all meat and muscle that one and wild as a werebear if he's looking to house nine fingers my blades got his back sounds messy as the ninth hell must be why she called us to help is that right the way i heard it you zent cut a deal with the new hold on you there Getting up in our affairs. Nine fingers won't be happy about Zenobia, and I'm not about to tell her. Subject's not safe. You selling your services. Beat feet to the Guild Hall. Lower City, Basilisk Gate, Guild Hall. And that's all you're getting from me. Now, Scram! The chat's officially closed. You don't have to think about it, Steve. Is your boss here to enjoy himself? Really? Oh. <laughs> I don't. I wish I 
Another case closed, another bottle open! Huzzah to Valeria! <laughs> Hang on a dick. I recognize that face. You were talking to Yanis after I left the temple. I bet she's put you up to something. Well, you won't get a sip for free. I insist you work for it. Propose a toast, and if it's worth drinking to, that is what we shall do. A tad cliche, but I've drunk to worse. To adventure, and all the dull investigation work it leaves in its wake. Now scram. I'm about to become terrible company. I presume you've found something interesting to discuss if you're interrupting me again? Gortash is being named Archduke. Time to pay Worms Rock a visit. Tell me, am I beautiful? More than beautiful. You are the aurora stretched across the north sky. You are the golden dune swept across the Kalim. You are the fruit of the forbidden palm. Soft on my skin, sweet on my tongue. You are my sin and salvation. Your parasite stirs, and you gaze at the nymph through the flaming fist's hungry eyes. Your muscles shiver with her longing. Your skin burns with her heat. Uh, what's... What's wrong, Jara? What are you? Wait. I know you. I don't understand. What's... Your face. 
the Absolute has shown me. Jarl, what's going on? Who's this man? Gather. Prepare. Behold. Your head screams in agony. The change has come. Pustules boiling beneath your skin, your bones twisting, your flesh rupturing. And suddenly, silence. What's happening? Taking up position. Hells, I'd heard tales of mind flayers, talons sharp as daggers, and tentacles yet more fearsome. But no tail did justice to its ethereal beauty. It floats like a butterfly. Its blood shimmers like silver. How can I help it? I don't regret its death. But I marvel that such a work of art could ever live. Her gaze intensifies. Your breath quickens, and your heart skips a beat. The woman's senses are heightened, and her fire stoked. The mind flare is no mere curiosity, but an object of desire. Why should I deny it? My urge is as natural as the grape upon the vine. But perhaps there are other flavors that might satisfy my palate. Rapture. Close your eyes and listen. You see only darkness. Her voice shines through it. Warmer than the sun, yet cooler than night. The all-being. Here, there is no suffering. Here, you want for nothing. Here, you are anything. You have one word. Tell me, what will you be? You are more than contented. You are at total peace. Your belly is full. Your mind rested. Your eyes bright. No more will you hear the clang of steel on steel. No more will you fear the cry of a wolf, the growl of an ogre. You are warm. You are safe. Your flesh shivers, your heart bursts. True ecstasy for one fleeting moment. Open your eyes. I'll remember you, and you'll remember me. If you seek rapture, find it elsewhere. I can show you but once.
flick of the wrist. This vessel is at thy disposal. Do what thou wilt. While she lives, Orin will continue to tap. We need to prove her wrong.
I'm glad you came. Not to my door. Not yet. But to the final reckoning. One more thing before we begin, though. For the first time since the Nautiloid, your mind is clear. It's unsettling. <laughs> Wouldn't that be exquisite? But no. I'm afraid the tadpole is still there. But I did shut out your other visitor for a while, so we can enjoy some privacy. The Illithid can't hear us. Huh. What's the catch? I brought you here because I'm true to my word, and I can make all of this tadpole business go away, which means you and your lovely friends can remain blessedly free of tentacles. Let us speak plain. I'll admit, you've impressed me. I wasn't sure you'd make it this far, but no matter how far you come, you're still on the road to ruin. A road that leads directly to a confrontation with the Elder Brain. At best, it will kill you and everyone else in this city. At worst, it will assimilate you and you won't have enough free will left to even wish you were dead. You have the key to destroying it in the palm of your hand, though. In a manner of speaking, but it's the one inside the prison that you need, not the Illithid, the Gith. I can give you the means to break him free. Speak, devil. We're listening. The Orphic Hammer. An artifact capable of shattering the chains that hold Prince Orpheus is held securely in my House of Hope, even now. Isn't it just? And it's even more convenient that you can give me exactly what I want in return. There it is. Of course. Power. You free Orpheus, and in doing so, save the city, the Sword Coast, perhaps the whole world, and your own precious skin, too. And you give me the crown? that dominates the Elder Brain. And you, Lazel of Kalir, want to free the Forgotten Prince, do you not? I don't want to free him. I want to kill him. Lazel of Kalir, do you think you can take a blade to the Prince while the Illithid still binds him? Goodness, no. If you wish Gith's long-suffering son dead, <laughs> you need the hammer. Handing that crown to this devil will be like feeding gunpowder to a lava worm. Agree to nothing. Ah. 
I have craved it ever since the Archwizard Casas created it long centuries ago and brought doom to the Empire of Netheril. That was the great age of humanity and Netheril's flying sky cities were the apex of civilization. I was there the day it all fell apart. Entire cities plummeted from the sky like angels with broken wings. The screams, oh, the screams. Hundreds of thousands of people watching in horror as the ground came up to meet them. <laughs> it was not a happy meeting. And Carsus was responsible. Not driven by malice, but by ambition. He forged a crown imbued with all the powers of magic. A crown that would make any who wore it a god. Men cannot contain so much power. The crown destroyed its creator, and his empire fell with him. Cassus's folly, the bards and scholars call it. I call it hope. The hope of creating a better world and the perils of unchecked hubris. I knew then that the folly of mortals could be the triumph of devils, and that I could use that crown to unite the Nine under one Archdevil Supreme, me. <laughs> Zariel wouldn't like that much, but even I'm not so desperate to spite her I'd put the Hells in this bastard's hands. The archdevil Mephistopheles snatched up the crown and squirreled it away in one of his vaults. He is not more than a frigid archivist. So much power and potential kept inert. He made a miracle into a museum piece. I raged. But only for a decade or so. Then I waited ever watching for more than a thousand years for a mistake, a mishap, a misadventure. And these chosen, who have caused you so much trouble accidentally, did me a favor. They brought the crown back into play. Through the aid of a diabolist, somebody capable of opening a portal to the Hells, deep in the Hells. They must have raided Mephistopheles' vault. Impressive, I must admit. But they'll be dead soon. If you don't kill them, the Elder Brain will. It doesn't have feelings in the way you'd understand them. <laughs> but it seems rather angry. It is inevitable. When you destroy the brain, and you will because you must, the crown will be yours for the taking. And when that moment comes, you give the crown to me. In exchange, I give you the hammer now. A simple transaction, it seems, but it's more than that. He's offering you an alternative to the mind flare in your head. Take Raphael's deal and you could free Orpheus. With Orpheus free, you would have no need to rely on the Emperor. But there's no guarantee that Orpheus would be on your side. And if you take the deal, you'll have to fulfill it. You'll have to deliver the crown of Carsus to the devil himself. He claims his ambition is to unite the Hells, but can he be trusted to stop there? Do you trust him more than you trust the Emperor? 
Squaw. We should do as the devil asks. I cannot slay Orpheus if I cannot break him free.